Hey guys, as we're navigating the uncharted, our prayers go out to those that have been affected by the COVID-19 virus. Please stay smart, consider others with your decisions. Kitbox is trying to balance service to our customers while also doing what is best for the team and their families. Yesterday, the Idaho governor issued a mandatory 21 day stay at home order. Some of our staff can work from home and we'll try to respond to your questions and Kitbox needs as best we can. Please utilize email instead of the phone as, as much as possible. It's easier for us to respond. We're doing the best to keep all of our orders on schedule on time. Kitbox will weather this crisis and we'll be back in full force as soon as allowable. In the meantime, why don't we take a walk, go out on a tour and kind of see more of the facility. Hey guys, welcome to Kitfox Aircraft. We're located in the southwest corner of Idaho at Airport Identifier Sierra 66. Homedale, Idaho is a kind of the gateway to the Oahis. We have the desert off to the south of us, which is some beautiful flying territory. You'll get a chance to fly with that with Stick and Rudder if you ever come up for a flight with them. We also head to the north and head into uh, uh, the Cascades, the Frank Church of the Wilderness and No Return, some of the best flying you can actually experience. Idaho has been built ideally for that purpose. Let's take a walk and we'll go ahead and see. We operate out of five buildings out here in the in Homedale and we do that to keep kind of separate entities, separate um, components within the kit box build areas different. So the well dust doesn't get in our parts, doesn't get part of the wing, the build areas aren't affected by different components that are done in there. So let's take a walk out to the weld shop. Unfortunately, as we talked at the beginning of this, we are in the middle of a crisis that's affecting the world. And uh, we're doing our best to comply with the stay at home order and also uh, meet our responsibilities and our um, obligations to our customers. What you're seeing here is a completed fuselage getting ready for inspection to go out to powder coat. Um, all the parts on the shelves in the background over here are a lot of the TIG parts and the subassemblies that go into the fuselage. A lot of people will ask, what does this fuselage weigh when it's sitting here bare? Roughly 82 pounds. Powder coating adds about a pound, roughly. Um, that's very common. As you can see, it's all 4130 chromoly steel. We source all of our steel from US mills. Um, we actually specify that. There are a few exceptions to that that aren't um, US mills simply because they don't manufacture that small of a tube or that wall thickness of a tube. And those will come out of Germany, some of them, and some of them out of Italy. We'll walk on over this direction. We'll see some of our parts, the, the small parts that are laser cut um, or uh, uh, run on our haws. And of course, we have a, a machine shop, a few lays, a couple TIG tables, a full blown mill, um, and of course, the sheet metal brakes and everything else that goes along with that. We do manufacture everything here. We are 100% US manufactured. State of Idaho has been for 35 years. It was introduced in 1984. We have different stations and usually when the welding is going on, the reason for the yellow covers that you see here is to reflect the, the uh, weld spark it's for folks like yourselves when they're getting a tour so they don't get blinded. All of our sub-assemblies are done from steel fixtures and steel tubing. Um, most of the, field, uh, the steel fixtures are double-sided. So you have one on each side for a different component within the, within the system. Obviously the raw materials comes in on the rack, comes off the, off the rack onto the saws, gets cut to print, cut to specification, staged in what we call a satellite station here so the guys can pull those components out of there by part number. You can see this, the vision over here. There's a couple of drawings that give the guys an overview. All of it's done in tooling and on the tooling is marked of what tubes go where. Uh, for part numbers and of course probably one of the most amazing fixtures we have is the fuselage fixture
A lot of people don't realize what goes into a, to a fixture if you're trying to design things correctly and, and uh, accurately, consistently. This is a work of art because you take this fuselage that you see behind you, or the one that we saw coming in here, that is actually done inside of this fixture. This fixture, therefore, we get the tubings in here. Now you've got to get the fuselage out. So how do we do that? So we have an open door here that opens it up. Another one here that is completely hinged and allows us to move things in and out as needed. The fixture you see here is for final assembly on the subcomponents. Some parts cannot be placed in that fixture simply because when they're placed in that fixture, you can't get it out. So it has to be hand placed out here. And for the benefit of those that have watched one of our famous YouTubers out there, Trent, this one's for you. We're back. So this is shipping and receiving. As you can see, we have about six kits sitting over here. We had eight here for a while. Um, we're shipping them about as fast as we can. Some of them will get full crated uh, going overseas. Um, it's a roughly a seven foot tall, four foot wide crate, 17 feet long. Um, and that's mostly for overseas clients. Then we have some customers that actually will come and pick their kit up. They enjoy the visit of seeing the facility, those sort of things. Most of them go out with a transport company, uh, Stewart's, which is a, a custom shipper, and it goes on the back of a 40-foot trailer, and they, we help them load it here. They show up at your door, and you help them unload it, so there's not a big crate that needs to be done. Um, as you can see, there, you know, there's a few different powder coat color options that are done. Uh, we also do smaller crates for some of the um, older kits that are out there, and we'll ship stuff over to them to continue to try to support uh, the kit box models all the way back to the early models. The, uh, but they'll get staged, get packaged, put on a wrap. All the boxes are individually wrapped, labeled, numbered, so that they have a packing list and a pull list that goes through with that. Makes it easier for you to do your physical inventory once you do get your kit. We do inventory all the parts here that are in the kit, and we try to maintain that inventory, everything from nuts, bolts, screws, rod ends, nut plates, whatever that case may be. And one of the things that's surprising to a lot of people is they don't realize how much of the kit is actually manufactured and produced here? They'll think sub-assemblies will come in, uh, parts get purchased from different sources or vendors, and we just package them all up. Fact of the matter is, we actually manufacture many, many, many of the parts from adjustable rudder pedal brackets that are done on our CNC haws, um, as opposed to, let's say, the raw material to make that part that would be in your kit, um, to brackets for mounting equipment to um, angles. I mean, something as simple as a, an aluminum angle that you could actually buy that we actually make out of a 6061 T6 aluminum and bend it rather than have an, uh, an extrusion uh, delivered. Extrusion would be easier, not necessarily correct. And then, of course, all the wood we have, and you'll see the router in a little bit later, but we inventory all the wood router from the floorboards. You know, years ago, the floorboards used to come to you as a print and it was on a board and you labeled it cut it now they come completely done one of the things we're looking at introducing here in the not too distant future is moving away from the wood or actually in the wood but the possibility to have an abs type boards available as well that's the skunk work so to speak uh, airfoil tail ribs rudder ribs things like that that are pre-cut pre-done a little bit of sanding a little bit of trimming you know i joke and tell people it's cut to shape hammer to fit and paint to match so uh, without any further ado, let's head over to the wing shop. Let's go on into the wing shop. This is always fun and something if you uh, get a chance, call your cable company and have them put, uh, um, oh, one of the chefs used to call it, it's a uh, smell-o-vision or something like that. He talks about because the wood smell in here is wonderful <laughs> and it's always enjoyable to do that. Anyway, we have a full-blown CNC table router in the back back there. Um, that we run all of our wood, aluminum, whatever we can on that. Uh, we've got ribs actually being manufactured over here currently.
This is the wing fixture. So when you when you order a quick build wing, this is what the wi the wing is built on, or it's in in hundreds have been built on this fixture. So it's actually done um, consistently, accurately, time and time again by people that have been building the same wing over and over again. The aluminum spars are prepped. The I-beam inserts are done. Uh, you may not know this, many people don't, is after the spars are prepped, down about the midsection of the, of the spar, there's an aluminum I-beam insert. That insert is completely prepped and ready to go on a quick build wing. If you get your standard wing, these wouldn't necessarily be cut. You would be prepping these. So a lot of folks ask how much time is saved in a quick build wing. We estimate it's about a couple hundred hours of savings, mainly because a lot of it is in the prep, not necessarily specifically the build. Um, the other question that happens frequently is people will ask, why don't you use aluminum instead of wood? And there's, uh, there's no argument to aluminum being good. Is it lighter? Not necessarily. Is it stronger? I don't think so. We actually use an aircraft grade Finland birch. It's uh, five millimeter and it's 10 ply. So if you know anything about um, plywood, it's all done in laminates. So it's uh, on a bias to each other and they're glued in sequence that way. Makes it extraordinarily light and yet extraordinarily strong. So you can actually try that with aluminum. It'll either fail or stay that way. The wood will recover. So it adds into the strength and the ability of the, of, the, of the wing. The cap strips on those are a two and a half millimeter five ply, or I'm sorry, yeah, five ply. So you, it's basically half of what the main rib is. This is a quick build wing that's sitting here staged. Um, I don't think there's any wet glue here. And it looks like it's completed and about ready to go out. They've, these have been pre-rigged to the fuselage, so they've been set up on the existing fuselage that's going with these wings, and the dihedral, the sweep, and the tw twist has been set. If you notice, there's actually an outline right here and a couple of holes that have been drilled. That's the location of the lift strut bracket and where that would be located. That takes another level of work out of it for you. The flaperons, on the other hand, are a little bit different. You don't have to build your own flaperons. There is some work you need to do to them. But this is the fixture for the flaperons. You notice there are three here. So we actually have the ability to make two asymmetricals, a left and a right at the same time. Then we have one fixture for making a symmetrical flaperon to support our earlier models again. But it's one fixture that will do either a left or a right. Inside of here are foam core ribs. And they're bonded with a polyurethane adhesive stored so when you get the flap on it comes to you basically as you see here maybe with a little less trimming needed on the ends a couple of sets of wings getting ready to go out the door for some customers one thing that i do want to share with you is we use our spars are two and a half inch aluminum drawn seamless spar a drawn seamless spar is uh, engineering wise is 20% stronger than an extruded spar that you'd see that's very common in some of our competition as well. We end up ordering thousands of feet of spars at a time to maintain what we need. They're cut to special length, it's a special run. So we actually maintain those um, and that's one of the things that's different about the kit box for that purpose. Let's head on over to the final shop. So this is the candy store. This is the one everybody looks forward to seeing at the end. For a variety of reasons. Everything comes together here. One of the most amazing things about building the airplane is as you're building it in, in your garage, you will spend hours, days putting this airplane together and then you'll walk back out there and feel like you haven't accomplished anything. And then all of a sudden you'll put covering on it. Covering on it, it goes from looking like this pterodactyl beast to a airplane all of a sudden and it's really kind of exciting. We have our own Ventilation booth here. Oh, let me turn some lights on. Where we'll put some poly brush down, and this is part of the Stitz polyfiber system, which is standard in the kit and what we offer uh, 
with the kit. There are options if you want to choose to use Oratex or uh, Stewart's or some other covering system, you're welcome to do so. We remove the polyfiber from the system. Why do we stay with polyfiber? The, the solvents and the chemicals and things. Polyfiber has been around for over 60 years. It's time tested and proven. Everything that we do, we try to look at it from a service, reliability, dependability side point, and we know polyfiber has been around. It's approved on many airplanes from Citabria's, Decathlon's, uh, Super Cubs, and we continue to stay with that process. And feel free to take a moment and soak this in because there's a lot going on here. Everything from the 915 engine, uh, which you, many of you may have heard about. It's 141 horsepower fuel injected, turbocharged, full FADEX system. It's one of the most technologically advanced engines today, uh, aircraft engines today. So as you can see, we have a pretty full plate going on here. We've got several airplanes in the works. There's two of them up front, one over here, one up on its gear. A set of painted wings off here to my right. Of course, a bare fuselage over here with the 915 mounted to it. This airplane will have the 915 mounted to it here shortly. Uh, the, this airplane being the red and black one. Uh, oh, biplane wings. You know, it's funny everybody asked that. We actually did build one biplane. And uh, it performed like a little pits. It was ran originally on an 80 horsepower. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was never offered as a kit. It was strictly sold, um, or I'm sorry, strictly done as a factory demonstrator. And I still have the wings for it. The airplane ended up with another set of wings on it and is still flying, I think it's down in Elko now. The airplane behind me here is a, a Series 7 STI. Full Garmin suite, 915 MT prop. Uh, we just got its airworthiness yesterday. We'll be getting ready to do the you know, flight testing with it and delivering it out the door here shortly. One of the employees that I like to brag about a lot, and I brag about all our employees a lot, we have a fantastic team here at Kid Fox, um, and it's it's just remarkable. I'm honored to be part of that whole team. It's uh, it's a great place to be, but one of my employees here, um, uh, Haas VF2 Superspeed, he's a great employee. does exactly what you ask it to do, nothing more, nothing less, and if you tell it to do something wrong, it'll do it. It'll absolutely do it. And we manufacture a lot of our parts on here as well. Everything from the weld bungs for our header tanks to the adjustable rudder pedal brackets, flat panel brackets that you saw earlier. Uh, we have some tooling and equipment over here as well. He never calls in sick. He's lazy once in a while, you know, he doesn't do anything when you don't ask him to either. So. And of course, this is a fuselage, another uh, uh, being put together here. And one of the things that is um, uh, not necessarily well known, it's well known by the people that fly kit boxes, is it's very, very, very re that responsiveness comes from the fact that everything is push-pull tubes. So it's all hard connected with push-pull tubes rather than cables and pulleys. They'll stretch, they can jump pulleys. The only cable control is the rudder, which is an 8th eight uh, inch, 7 by 19 wound stainless steel cable. Don't mind the small wheels on that one. We do that in the shop because we can't get up there when it's up on the big wheels to work on it a lot. So. Just ignore that. Nobody said my wheels are too small ever, um, or too big ever. It was one of those two. Anyway, the, um, the Grove wheels and brakes, so you have master cylinders on both sides. A good chance to see this where you won't normally see it um, outside of that. The aluminum tank you see there is actually a one-gallon header tank. Both wing tanks come down and feed that central point header tank. Um, 
therefore, you know, you know, if you get any sloshing or something, it's hard to unport the fuel from the system. And that's about it. Something that's coming up very quickly here. Um, this will be the first announcement of it. We're actually introducing a completed panel and wire harness. It, it's, uh, we're probably about 30 days away at this point, I guess, give or take a little bit, but it will be a pre-cut, pre-made panel. Uh, the wire harness will be completed. All Garmin G3X, we're setting it up for four panels. Stay tuned for more information on that. That'll be coming soon. Be a huge advantage. The theory is that you'll be able to a, a panel in and have the wire harness in and be completed probably in a day, two, three on the outside if you don't work at it very hard. The harness will include a Garmin G3X, GTR 200, full ADS-B in and out. Um, autopilot is an option. It'll be a single 10-inch display, a 10-inch and a 7-inch display with or without an autopilot. So those are your four choices, essentially, is what's going to happen. Uh, but stay tuned for more information. But we'll have a 10-inch without an autopilot, 10-inch with an autopilot, 10 and 7-inch without an autopilot, 10 and 7-inch with an autopilot. Well, that's kind of it for the tour. You've seen uh, the candy store here, obviously, and I told mentioned earlier that we actually have five buildings, so we'll step over to our fifth building here. Normally, we don't include this as part of the tour simply because it's, it's kind of off the beaten path and, and we don't offer PPE equipment, the personal protection equipment, uh, with the fiberglass. So let's take a walk over to the fiberglass shop and we'll go from there. Three years ago, the folks that were making our fiberglass parts uh, decided to close up shop. So we did some research to find out if there were some other vendors that we could possibly use uh, to manufacture. We weren't happy with what we were seeing, so we decided to bring it in-house. One of the best moves we made. We have some talented people that are doing the work for us. It gives us better quality control, uh, better maintenance of our tools. Just the entire package has worked out much better. It gives us more flexibility to be able to offer things like the carbon fiber. We also utilize all our own equipment. By doing that, it gives us the idea to be able to quickly manipulate a mold or make a new mold to introduce a new part or even to make the part that we are offering as a better installation. So please take a look around. We have our uh, spray booth in the end there for doing our gel coating. And of course, all the fiberglass components that get cut up, the molds off to the sides here. Uh, so we'll do the wet layup and we have some heat rooms for post cure and uh, uh, we're using all the modern resins to maintain weight and performance and it's uh, turned out to be quite a benefit to bring it in house. It's maintained our quality and uh, efficiency and at the end result is just a better product. And that pretty much concludes the rest of the tour. Uh, let's head back over to the office and we'll go from there. Well guys. Thanks for coming out. Thanks for visiting Kit Box. We do appreciate it. Again, our prayers go out to everybody that's been affected by the COVID-19. Uh, it's, it's unprecedented times. It really is. I know we hear that on the media. We hear it everywhere we go. Fact of the matter is it's running rampant. It's, go it's growing rapidly, and we all need to do our part to try to make this go away. Uh, the sooner it goes away, the sooner things get back to normal. And by the way, if you have a flying kit box or any flying airplane for that matter, make sure to practice social distancing appropriately and go for a flight. So without further ado, have a good vacation uh, or a good time. Enjoy the videos. Try to relax and uh, stay safe. Thanks.